Hey, it's Jeff, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you some plants that you guys have been asking for some updates with, as well as uh, some ongoing propagations. It's just gonna be kind of a mishmash uh, type video today. I also think I found thrips on another plant, so I'm gonna show you that one, how I'm going to treat it, and I'm also gonna update, um, what plant is it? Uh, the uh, Schismatoglottis uh, wallachii. I'm gonna show you how that one's doing as well after treating it with some uh, Dr. Doom, insecticidal sprays. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get started. I'm going to begin with my beautiful Alocasia Silver Dragon Scale. I made a video about five months ago with this plant, saving it from root rot. It has since been put in perlite, and I don't get a lot of let me see the perlite. I don't get a lot of questions about it, but um, so I guess the most common question I do get about this plant is if I am permanently keeping this in perlite. The answer is yes. It is doing so well in perlite. It is, uh, it's just, it's constantly putting out new growth. So I'll show you some of the uh, new growth that's popping up here in a second, but I water it like I normally would uh, with a, like a regular soil house plant. Um, actually it's dripping water right now. So right on my table. Um, I do put this under the tap. I spray off the leaves, um, just kind of let it uh, rinse off uh, just in case there is any uh, spider mites like little webs or that sort of thing. These are super susceptible to spider mites. So I just rinse the leaves off. I drench it underneath the tap and occasionally I will water with uh, some fertilizer as well. So I'll just put it in a watering can, just kind of drench the soil, put it back in its pot and uh, put it back in its place. But it's doing absolutely uh, wonderfully and I'll show you some new growth here. Um, I'll give you some close-ups. I do have it in this uh, clear uh, orchid pot insert. And the reason why I put it in a, a pot like this is that um, I don't want any algae buildup on the perlite. You can see there's maybe like a little bit of staining. I don't know if you can see it or not, but when I had it just in a clear pot and it was in a bright area, uh, there was some algae buildup. So that's why I have it in a clear pot. And that way you can see some cool root growth as well. I've been using these beneficial bugs for my thrip issue, um, mainly just like as a preventative for a lot of these plants. Uh, this one's upstairs, so I don't really have an issue upstairs. It's uh, mainly downstairs here in a couple plants, which I'll talk about shortly, but um, I've been using these uh, little packs of beneficial bugs. I don't like the way they look like when they hang on the plant, but uh, after a few weeks, the uh, bugs should all um, be out of the pack. They exit through, let me get a pencil, exit through a little hole in the pack right there. So that's actually a question I had before too, is having these bugs get out of the pack. So you hang it on the leaves, there is a little hole, and eventually they just uh, climb out there and uh, they seek out any uh, bad insects. So these are the predatory or beneficial bugs. These ones specifically stay on the leaves. I don't find them throughout my house or anything like that. They're just uh, strictly on the leaves. Um, once they've consumed or ran out of their food source, then they will die. Okay, getting a little off track here. Um, here is the new growth. Here's a new um, leaf popping out there. There's one back here. And where is it? There is a new entire like side shoot right here as well. So I'm getting, uh, a, it looks like a third little plant um, as an offshoot from this one here. So it's got, looks like two separate plants right here. I think they're attached. I can't remember if, uh, if that's correct or not, but it does send out these little side shoots. There's another one. So I'm getting three growth points on this one plant. And I know there was another growth point popping out through the side. You can see it, it it's like a thicker root and I can't see it right now. Maybe it's not this one. Maybe it's the other dragon skill over here, but anyways, this is uh, this is how this one's doing. It's getting a little lengthy here, but um, here is one of the newer leaves. They are absolutely gorgeous. What a what a stunning plant! And if you've never felt uh, the leaf of an alocasia silver dragon skill before, it's very plasticky. It's not soft like you would expect it to be. It's not velvety. It's just it feels like a piece of plastic. So this is the silver dragon and this is just the dragon skill. This is the newest leaf. I picked this one up probably a few months ago. It is also getting a new little growth point. It's the first growth since having, actually no, this is the newest leaf. Uh, so this is the second leaf since uh, getting it. You can see the white roots right there and then there's kind of like a, a darker root um, lower in the pot. I do believe that is a new growth or a new plant formation. Uh, so yeah, this one's doing good. The place that I bought it from, it's not typically where I buy my plants. Um, I think they do spray off their plants as a preventative. 
but it leaves this like uh, white kind of milky residue and I can't get it off the leaf. I've been uh, cleaning it, rinsing it, spraying it, all that kind of stuff and I don't know, I don't like that. But the newest leaves, like this one, is gorgeous. It's got a little deformity right there, but that's okay. It just makes this plant extra special. <laughs> and uh, here's one of the older ones as well. You can see it's got that kind of little residue on it. So um, otherwise, these are the dragon scales and they are both looking fantastic doing uh, extremely well in the perlite. Here is my Eglinema cutlass that I made a video on about a month ago. Um, it was getting a bunch of yellow leaves um, and also it was getting pretty long and leggy. So I did decide to prune it in hopes that it would start to branch out. And you can see it is getting multiple growth points from numerous nodes like I was hoping for. So this is how you get a, a plant like this to get more bushy, like if it's getting too uh, tall and leggy. I'm just gonna take this off here just so you can see. It is getting a number of growth points. So when you cut the top of a plant off, it doesn't matter if it's like an Agalinema, if it's a Diefenbachia, um, Philodendrons, anything like that, anything with these uh, nodes. Anytime you cut the top off, it uh, will hopefully activate nodes lower in the plant and uh, like it did with this one. Now it's gonna be branching out in a, a number of locations and I hopefully will get this plant to be looking uh, bushy and full again. I like how thick these uh, stems are as well, so it should be able to support the uh, extra weight from the branches and all these extra leaves, but um, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And uh, yeah, I'll show you the cut portions as I put them in water here. These have gotten uh, some pretty juicy roots as well. Probably be ready for planting in soil. I did keep these two in at the same time. So I'm gonna pull them out, hopefully. These are smaller roots, but they're, uh, they're definitely looking uh, really, really healthy. Nice, thick, white roots. Um, I might leave these in water for a little bit longer. Please don't break them. And uh, yeah, so that's an update with this one. I'll be potting these three cuttings in soil together, separate from this pot. So now I will have uh, two gorgeous pots of the uh, um, Eglinema cutlass. I got a few more plants to show you guys here in a second, but I just want to take a minute just to say thank you to everyone that uh, liked, watched, commented on my recent uh, Q&A video that I put out uh, last week. Uh, I was actually blown away um, by all the kind comments, so I just want to say thank you for that. You guys are awesome. I was a little apprehensive about uploading that video just because I didn't know how it would be received, um, but hands down, um, I love that video after reading all the comments. I've actually taken some screenshots of some super nice, kind comments from you guys. Um, it made me smile. I absolutely love it. So with uh, all the positivity from that video, I do want to make another one probably, I don't know, maybe at the end of the year or something like that. So um, look forward to that, but I just wanted to say thank you. You guys are all awesome, amazing, and I really appreciate the support for this channel and for me. I did the same thing with my Syngonium Podophyllum as I did with the Aglaenema. You can see there is a bunch of nodes along the stem of this one as well. So this Syngonium got really long and leggy. They actually do uh, end up becoming a trailing plant. So they do get uh, quite uh, tall and then they kind of start drooping over. It is a trailing plant. If you want it to remain as more of a bushier plant, um, I just, I, that's what I wanted with this one. I just chopped the tops off, uh, propagated these in water. I have now since put them in soil. But you can see also, just like the Aglinema, cutting the tops of the plants off. I just realized there's no tip to my pencil. Broke off. Um, it has activated a number of nodes. So it looks like there's a few on this uh, stem right here and got some new growth. This is the first newest leaf since uh, chopping the top off and propagating it. Let's see what else. And here's another leaf obviously as well. Oh, here's another little new one coming down there. Here was, I did leave one leaf on the plant. It's uh, dying, so I'm gonna remove that. Um, I don't wanna crush any of the nodes, but just gonna peel it off. Plant no longer needs this one. It's pretty well a dead leaf. So I'm gonna leave it to the rest. It's actually getting some new growth from this one as well. So it's gonna to continue to vine. I just notice that from this uh, one spot. Let's see if I can focus that. It's getting a new growth point. So started to branch off at the top and I don't know if there's any growth points on the lower. Maybe right there is another one, but 
super cool. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing this kind of uh, grow out into more of a bushier plant. This one, like I said, I propagated it in water, uh, transitioned it to soil really easy. I've just been keeping it a little bit more on the damp side for the first few weeks, and then just slowly cut back to a regular watering schedule. Um, this stem was pulled out by Oscar the other day. Um, so I don't know if some roots got damaged or what. I should actually bring him downstairs, do a little update with him. Um, he has been staying away from my plants for the most part. Uh, I just went upstairs to, uh, to grab this plant and my wife said he was nibbling at a plant. So I'm gonna bring him down and we'll do an update. Here's the little troublemaker. Hey, getting in trouble upstairs. You're getting so big. <laughs> and fluffy. Hey, yeah, you're a good boy. You haven't been in a video for a while. Hey, stay there. Let's see. Can you sit? Sit. Good boy. Just so everyone can see you. Hey, you're such a handsome boy. Getting in trouble upstairs. Hey. I guess I should talk about these plants. Um, I have added, I know, you're back. I have added these, don't eat it. You can smell it, but don't eat it. I have added these plants on the floor with another grow light that's attached to my jade plant. Kind of a makeshift little setup right now, but uh, one of the big plans that I want to do uh, for, not the channel this year, but um, I do want to grow large pothos plants. So I did stick a, uh, a Cebu Blue down there as well as a Golden Pothos. I want these uh, stems to grow up on this uh, wood plank and I want uh, these large massive pothos leaves. That's my goal this year is to grow a large pothos plant and see if I can get it to reach up to the ceiling. And uh, so yeah, I just added a few other plants down here. This is, uh, I don't even know the name of this, but this is like a spider plant, but it actually is an aglaenema. So it looks like a very thin cutlass type leaf, um, almost with like an emerald beauty uh, pattern on it. So I don't even know the name of this. The tag just said aglaenema, but uh, this is a super cool one. And uh, yeah, this is kind of my little setup. I'm gonna extend. The, uh, the plant workshop area a little bit. I haven't told my family yet, but uh, that's what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah, that's, like I said, this is kind of the main goal this year is just to maintain the plants that I have, grow them big. I have a lot. I don't really need any more. There's a couple that are on my wish list, um, but for the most part, I'm just going to focus on the ones that I have. Hopefully by the end of the year, I will have some substantial growth that I can uh, share with you guys. Thought I'd bring my Sweetheart downstairs, she was up sleeping on the couch and I know you guys haven't uh, haven't seen the pups for a while, so <laughs> she needs her face trimmed. You're getting all scruffy, eh? You need your face trimmed. I know. About a month ago, I made a video on my Monstera Siltipicana as well as my uh, Golden Hawaiian Pothos having spider mites. I treated it with an insecticidal soap and I no longer have any issue with uh, spider mites on these uh, plants, but you can see it is now getting a bunch of new growth. Uh, there's a new growth point right there. Um, and it's gotten a few new leaves, I think, since making that video. So it's done really well. Everything's looking really healthy. Um, no yellowing, no uh, spider mite damage or anything on it. Same with this one here, the uh, Golden Hawaiian. It's uh, pushed out, I think, well, for sure one leaf, maybe two, and it's getting a new growth point there as well. You can see, where is it? On some of the older leaves, they're still looking a little bit damaged. So whenever you do have spider mites, I don't think the leaf will repair itself. It will kind of always remain as a little bit of a damaged type of leaf. Uh, this is one plant that I want to grow into those large, massive uh, pothos leaves. And the trick, or I guess the way to do that is to train it to grow upwards like it would in its natural habitat. So I made this uh, little burlap pole and it is now getting a bunch of new growth. So there's a couple stems. Here's a new leaf here as well. And uh, yeah, I think this might be a new leaf here too. So uh, yeah, just a little update on these two. No more spider mite issues. I have been spraying it down with, uh, or just misting it off with some water. Now I have those uh, beneficial bugs on this plant as well. Now back here, I made a video, I wanna say probably like a year ago, about making a mixed pot of pothos. So it's got golden pothos, it's got uh, jade, um, it's got some neon, uh, some marble queen, um, some pearls and jade. This one really hasn't done anything. And I think that's it. So 
I want to say there's uh, five varieties of pothos in this plant or in this pot and it is growing into a nice gorgeous plant with uh, just a, such a cool look to it. Um, it's starting to trail and vine. I just like the look of the pot with all the different colors and all the different shades of green and, and uh, yellow and white, that sort of thing. I think it just makes a nice and attractive looking pot. So when making all these update videos for these plants, you may have asked yourself, hey, where is the Wally Grove planter that uh, used to be hanging on the wall there? Well, that's the next one that I'm gonna be showing you guys and that is the next victim for thrips. It is my Scandapsis exotica. I noticed some yellowing leaves, took it down, found a couple of thrips on it. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna treat this and hopefully we can get this under control again. Went upstairs to go get my printing shears and I almost forgot to show you guys my prop boxes. So I did uh, take a bunch more cuttings of my Hoya Polynera. Uh, here is some uh, Crimson Princess. I do have this dead looking Syngonium. This is the Batik. Uh, it didn't do so well. <laughs> basically died back. I got the uh, the mother plant stem upstairs. Uh, it's got no leaves on it. Um, it's in my south facing window or off to the side. So I'm gonna uh, try and rehab that one back. Um, here is, uh, this is the Parasitica heart leaf. And here is uh, an Alocasia silver dragon scale. I found a bulb in the soil when I was saving my uh, other one from root rot. And I just got a bunch of other, whoops. Uh, a bunch of other propagations in here as well. I got an aglinema. I threw a couple of wet sticks in these uh, prop boxes here as well. And I think these are uh, some Cebu blue, like this little guy right here. I think that's a Cebu. I'm not too sure if it is or not, but uh, here is uh, some Diefenbachia. This is the Sterling. Here is my reflector. It's getting a couple leaves, but it doesn't have the uh, typical or classic variegation like this one. I don't know if it has to mature or if it's actually reverting. And here is a philodendron. I had a friend give this to me just because um, she was having some difficulty rooting it. I guess it was a cutting. I'm not too sure if she bought it or traded, but I'm gonna be uh, trying it uh, or trying to root it in my perlite prop box. I don't know if I can get a good picture of it or not, but just a tiny little thing. So I'm gonna see if I can root this for her and then uh, get that back to her. But yeah, this is what's kind of ongoing in my perlite prop boxes right now. Everything's looking super healthy, super green. Okay, this is the Scandapsis that I noticed. Um, it uh, had a couple of thrips on it. So I first noticed uh, a few of the leaves that were turning yellow. So you can see this one is quite badly damaged. It just, it doesn't look healthy. Um, and also there's a few other leaves up here that on the ends of them, they, uh, they look uh, yellow. And then you can see there's a little bit of damage here. So I did find uh, two thrips on this. I squished them and then I already sprayed the plant down once with uh, Dr. Doom insecticidal soap. I'm going to try and save this one. I know Scandapsis exotica, they're a little bit more on the common side now, but I'm gonna try and not throw plants out anymore um, unless it gets really bad. I guess the bugs on this, I wouldn't consider like an infestation. There wasn't a ton of them. So I'm just gonna try and not throw plants out just because of bugs. So if you have house plants, you're gonna have bugs. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm actually going to cut this back. So I have my pruning shears and I'm going to cut this back to somewhere like this. And I'm gonna cut this one back to up to here as well. Just throw this out and we'll see. If, if there's lots of damage on this plant, then I'm not gonna try and save it. But for right now, I'm just gonna cut them back. There's a busted up leaf over here. It looks like damage from unfurling. So I'm gonna cut that quite aggressively back like that. I'm gonna throw these right in the garbage can outside. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take my little flashlight, look underneath the leaves, make sure there's no bugs or uh, anything that I can visually see on the plant. Might cut back a few of these damaged leaves, but um, so yeah, just flip the leaves over. If you see any kind of like black bugs or like white, uh, looks like a little grain of rice. Looks like there's a little bit of damage right there. Don't see any bugs yet. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna spray it down again. And I wanna show you something on my uh, Wallachii. So I have not seen any more thrips on the Wallachii. The leaves, um, they are still a little bit uh, discolored, but in the newest one here is it's gonna pretty much shrivel up and die off. But that's okay because eventually it will start to push out new growth. These are still isolating or quarantining in my bathroom. So I'll keep the exotica in here as well. But I did spray this down once with the Dr. Doom and then I sprayed it off or rinsed it off with some water. I've been checking the leaves daily and there is no 
uh, any thrips or anything like that. So one thing I should say um, before using any sort of uh, pest treatment, just make sure that you test it out on one leaf because at first I thought this, uh, this uh, wall itchy was damaged, but now upon looking at it on the underside of the leaves, um, it looked like it uh, damaged the underside, but um, it looks okay right now. But just make sure you test it on one leaf. These leaves will probably die and uh, fall off eventually, just like the ones I cut off. But uh, the plant is still alive and it will push out new growth eventually. So I'm probably going to spray it down a couple more times before I put it back out with the rest of the plants. Just make sure I don't see any more thrips on this. Here's what I'm going to be using for the spray. It's uh, Dr. Doom's indoor plant spray. It's good for thrips, uh, whitefly mites, and aphids, among other things. So basically what you do is, uh, you, well, first of all, you want to make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Make sure you wear a mask so you're not breathing this stuff in. It, uh, it, it pretty well stinks. And then just uh, coat or spray the top of the leaves and make sure you get the uh, backside there as well. This is, or it must come in contact with the bugs in order to kill them. Once it dries, as far as I know, it's no longer effective. So once it's dry, you can uh, rinse the plant off just uh, with some water. But otherwise, just coat the leaves just simply like that. I'm gonna put the camera down here in a second and uh, I'll get the underside. Almost smells like a, I don't know, like a plastic or something like that. So just coat the backside like this, shake it up a bit. And this should kill these spider mites and stuff too. So get the stems. Probably should wear gloves for this as well, but. Doesn't have to be perfect. It will kind of drip dry. Just make sure you coat all the leaves. Is something like that. I'll probably rinse it off in a couple hours. Hopefully it takes uh, care of any bugs on these uh, on these leaves. Just something like that. So that's gonna be pretty much it for this update video. I hope it answered uh, any questions that you may have um, from a previous video. So thanks again for watching. Take care everyone, bye.